I have a very difficult task. How does one make a speech after what you have just heard? <laughs> Normally, chief guest speeches are kept at the end to be followed only by a vote of thanks. It makes the jobs of all others easy. Anyway, I will try my best. <coughs> a respected chief guest, Amaji, we welcome you here. We are very, very happy to have you here with us. Many, many years ago, when Swamiji was alive and my father was alive, we used to stay in Jipmer and my father wanted to go to the ashram. And I used to accompany him there on a fairly regular basis. And I have not talked to them, but I have seen Swamiji, I have seen Ammaji, and then and a small boy running here and there, that must have been Anand. So my association with their philosophy goes back over several decades. A respected Vice Chancellor, who is an inspiration to all of us in this institute to keep going in spite of so many hurdles that we encounter every day. I respected Dean Professor Ravi Shankar, my friend of many years, Madan Mohan, and Anand. I am privileged to stand here today and say before all of you that I can proudly call him my student because uh, he worked in my unit as an intern when he was at Jipmar. So I did contribute in a small way to his training in allopathy, though not in yoga. And of course, she's not on the dais, Yoga Chemal Meena, her ever smiling face. Whenever I don't see her in person, I see her on Facebook. <laughs> so. Thanks for all of you for being here. And it's my privilege to participate in this function. They said I am in charge of Aim High and in charge of yoga and music. I am a surgeon by profession. But when I go to these areas, I become an obstetrician. <laughs> My role is masterly inactivity and let nature take its course. I only listen to them and try to provide the facilities that we can provide and leave them to do the excellent work that they are already doing. That is my only contribution to AIM High. What do I understand personally about yoga? Not much, I must confess. I was trying to tell myself how I will define yoga. We all know, and this is well known to everybody, that this is yoga is harmony of the soma and the psyche, the soul and the body, and harmony of those two with the environment, and harmony of those two with nature. Now, those of us who have studied physics and the wave motion theory know that waves, when they are in synchrony, they become taller and higher, and they're able to reach greater heights. But waves which are not in synchrony cancel each other out, and then you have only a flat race. You cannot reach the potential that you are capable of. And I personally feel that yoga research to determine the efficacy, safety, and dosage of some of these medicines so that these become integrated with practice of modern medicine as we know in our country. What does the national policy of Indian systems of medicine say? Very much the same thing. There are any number of documents in the public domain which encourage, which plead, which push us, which force us 
to go in this direction, but you don't find many people doing this. I am very glad to say that we are the first health university in the country to promote this in a big way. Because we don't want to compete into stem cell research like everybody else. We need resources. Jipmer can do that. They have got money. Yoga research doesn't require that much money. And therefore, we can go into those areas which are the need of the population rather than compete with those who are much wealthier than us. So there are guidelines. MCI in 1997 has said yoga should be part of the curriculum of physiology. How many years ago was that? 18 years. And we are one of the very few colleges in India. I don't really know how many have done it which has formally introduced yoga in undergraduate curriculum. <laughs> but we are still not able to introduce it in the examination because we have a sister institution where we are not able to do the same teaching learning activity. Once we can also provide the services to them, then it will also become part of the coding, right, sir? Yes. So that is why. But look at our own self. in. Balaji Vidya Peet. We have a body of allopathic practitioners who don't have skepticism, who don't, who are not cynical, who are open-minded about complementary and alternate systems of medicine, who are willing to look at evidence and use it in their practitioners, who are willing to refer their patients for therapy. That is why more than 2,500 have been referred for music therapy and I think now more than 11 or 12,000 have been referred for yoga therapy from other departments. So we don't have skeptics, we are believers. But we need you to give us material so that we can make others also believe. So that we can make it larger. There's also a problem with yoga gurus. There is a body of who also has a background of allopathy. So environment here is very, very conducive. And I feel the management is with us 100%. They have never denied anything for propon propon uh, promoting complementary or alternate medicine. The soil is very fertile. I know they are working very hard. I know they are publishing a lot of material. But I want this university to be the nodal point of spreading this message. There is no point if in one corner of India, in a small town, we do this. This should be called. Thank you all very much for inviting me here. It's been a great pleasure talking to you all. I'll come and try to listen to some of these things subject to, because as you go higher and higher in the hierarchy, you are mostly attending meetings. <laughs> so I have already two or three meetings to attend. But whenever I find time, I'll come and think. But I am with you mentally, and I am with you morally, and I'll see that whatever you produce as a result of it, your discussion is disseminated widely. Thank you very much.